Are you prepared for more market correction? If you're not, then you need to pay attention to today's video. I'm going to be covering four tips on how to protect profits and also capital, plus still trade during a market correction without getting your face ripped off. Uh, this is Dennis Wilburn, the Active Trend Trader. It's time for How to Make Money Trading Stocks. We're going to be covering those four points uh, towards the end of today's video and also two stocks and one ETF that we're going to be watching for a potential uh, big rocket move. After the correction's over, we're going to tell you exactly what to look for in those three entities moving forward so you will be ready. So let's get ready for today's session right hey good afternoon everybody this is dennis wilbur i want to welcome you all to today's session of how to make money trading stocks and options uh, plus some trading tips uh, i want to welcome uh well the big question will uh, before i welcome anil the big question that it, probably everybody has today is how much further is this market going to fall because uh, as i as i stipulated in last week's session i said the uh, the uh, the market was ugly, but it could get a lot uglier, and it looks like it is you know, fulfilling that prophecy coming up. So, uh, Neil, how you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm glad to be here. And so, um, I I I am pre I'm, excuse me for being presumptuous, but but I can only imagine that you're probably keeping your powder dry a little bit, not not or in being very selective on how you are getting into this market right now? Yeah, currently uh, my system says it got sell signals everywhere. Ah. And uh, for the first time probably in the last two years, uh, I'm publishing Delaware focus list every week. And my guess is there will not be a single stock this time. We'll see. Wow, that is very interesting because you know I'm kind of like in the same boat. Um, the uh, and a lot of us are just moving all the cash. That's one thing I like about Active Trend Trading System is that it actually moved us out of a lot of positions for small losses and got us into just basically standing by with cash. And I'm going to have three or four four different tips today on what to do when the market is basically really, really weak, how to trade that. We'll go cover those coming up here shortly. Uh, just remember, are you spending hours looking for stocks every weekend? We'll stop it. You don't have to. Uh, the Active Trend Trading System is a proven, simple, clear, and simple system focused on helping you trade your way to wealth and financial freedom. My goal is to achieve 40% return on investment per year uh, with 65% win-loss ratio. One of the things I've noticed this year that win-loss ratio is really tough to maintain simply because there is a lot of whipsaw going on in this market. And uh, we are approaching uh, 30%. But again, I was up to about 32%. And I wish, you know, swished back. Um, the last two weeks, I think, have been a micro, 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 <laughs> micronism of the market in total for the year. And um, so I'm, I'm, close to 70 uh, to um, uh, 30 percent for the year I do believe I will make it to the 40 percent mark by the end of the year and if not I'm gonna be hey I'm still beating the, the market and this will make the tenth year in a row <clears throat> the active trend trading has beat the s p and typically on each one of those years it's been by double digits. So here, just remember, I love what Tom Sosnoff has to say. Wealth creation is a derivative mechanically addressing opportunity. A lot of times, new traders and traders of all, you know, at all levels, they, they basically don't recognize that there's a mechanical connection there. And so they uh, get oftentimes swept up in trading strategies, but they don't have the mechanical system underneath those strategies to basically prop them up so they don't feel like deer in a headline when, headlights when a stock or an ETF goes against them. Uh, and so the mechanically addressing opportunity basically means you've got rules and you obey those rules. Remember, 
All, all materials that we do present are for training purposes. Traders should always paper trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. Uh, past performance is not an indication or promise of future performance. So here's where we're sitting as of the end of November. We were at about 28%, uh, uh, about 26% as we were closing out the, uh, the month. And so we have jumped up a little bit more up to the 28%. Uh, beating the, the, uh, the S&P by 7 point, uh, almost, uh, almost 8% uh, for the year. So I'm very pleased with that. And before we go into the market review, um, one of the things that we did last week, and, and if you watched the YouTube video of the, the analysis last week, I did something called um, um, rapid fire. And in that rapid fire, if, if you found that beneficial, I covered like 11 stocks. And if you found that beneficial, please leave a comment uh, down in the, the chat box. And also, if you're joining us on YouTube, and if you're over there on YouTube right now, uh, welcome aboard. Leave a comment down in the, to the chat in the, in the uh, uh, discussion on YouTube saying, yeah, I either like the, the rapid fire or I didn't like the rapid fire. Uh, that way we'll know whether or not we should include more of that or less of that. So let's go ahead and jump in like we did before. Let's go ahead and, okay, thank you, Mohammed. I really appreciate that. that is, thank you for the feedback. And um, so let's go ahead and just jump over to the indexes. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to the indexes. We will do the review of that. But if it's okay with you and Neil, I'm going to cover Steve, who isn't with us today. He's, he's uh, celebrating with his daughter, I think, back in, where did he go? Not Massachusetts, but uh, Wisconsin? I think Minneapolis, he said. Okay. Yeah. And, and so and all I know is it's cold back there. <laughs> right. And so, you know, I I am such a such a wussy when it comes to cold weather. And I know it's getting cold back on the East Coast. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in and let's look at Steve's pick for today. It's on two. Now, Steve basically said that he would buy this. Uh, if it finishes above the 20-day moving average, he would buy it right here. Uh, it is an interesting stock. It does have, just be aware, no weekly options. It does have, let me double check here. Uh, yeah, this is, not a, this is not a stock you're going to want to trade options on right now. The, the uh, open interest is very slim. And it's very, people, it appears as if people are just using the options to sell covered calls on it. So let's take a look at this. It's been in a nice uptrend going back into March of last year. Uh, what I'm looking at this right now, and Neil, what I'm seeing is basically I've got a shooting star that's forming for the weekly chart. I still have my momentum facing up, but uh, the uh, a shooting star. And so I would look for a pullback for myself back into this breakout area, about $80. And or it's got some additional support down here at about the 34 day moving average. Now, Steve may, you know, he said that as long as he holds above the 20 today, he would be interested in buying this, uh, this stock, O-N-T-O. -O. Um, one of the things and I'll just, you know, bring out uh, uh, one of the first points to focus on this week with the, with the marketing correction look for a convergence of clues. If the market's going down, and basically, and the momentum on the market is going down, be very cautious and plan your entries on your, you know, if you're going to go long on any stock, plan your entries very carefully and look for the convergence of clues. What do I mean by that? Where's the, what's the momentum doing? Am I at a level of past support? because those are high probability and low risk areas to enter. Enter. So what do you think of, uh, have you been watching ONTO, Anil? Uh, no, I have not been watching. Definitely. Okay. And so, so that's Steve's pick for the week. Now let's go and look at the indexes and then we'll look at Anil's pick for the week. Uh, so let's go over here and look at, let's take a look at the S&P. 
S, okay, S&P is at a critical junction. <laughs> uh, what I mean by that is it has come all the way back down to, done this little lake effect, down to the uptrend line. There's a couple of different ways you can draw the uptrend line. You can use it from the low here to these, this, this low here, uh, from this low to that low. We could also draw it in here like this. Uh, and so we know that it's approaching a level of support. We are, we are close to the 100-day moving average. And so what I'm looking at on the S&P is um, a couple of different things. Is one, the, um, let, me get, let me get a pencil here. Okay, one of the things that's happened is the 8 and the 20 have crossed to the downside. Price action is moving below the 50 and below the 34. It appears as if the market may want to continue to fall. If we take out this low here at that level there, which is about one, about the one, uh, 450 level, then we're probably going to traject all the way down to, I would say, 437-ish. Uh, one of the ways we can just double check that is just... Uh, uh, just throw a quick Fibonacci on this, and uh, and I want to go from low to high. So let's just grab that up to high, and a 100% move to the downside would be down to 426, which would be at the 200-day moving average, which is in this zone over here. Look to your left where buyers came in previously. How much of a drop is that? And there, this is tip number two. No where 10% is. So right now, if we if we basically uh, finish the week, right, we are, we're down about 4.8, almost 5%. So that means that if we did get all the way down to that 426 level, that's only 10%, folks, which is a healthy pullback, healthy correction, and, and could help us reload and get ready to you know, spring load up to a better move. There's a lot of froth in the market that needs to be worked out. And so that's what I'm seeing with, uh, that's what I'm seeing with the, uh, the S&P. NASDAQ, NASDAQ to me looks actually a little bit, eh, they're both looking uh, kind of weak. And I'll show you why. Well, one, we took out this swing low here. We took out that swing low there. And so what do we have? We had this past week, we had a rally attempt, failed rally attempt, and now we're pushing on down below the 50. So what comes into play for me if I'm looking at trading these indexes, uh, folks, is any kind of a pullback back up into the 50-day uh, moving average. That uh, If that then stalls out right there, that would give me a, a, an opportunity to trade this to the downside. Uh, if I go over here, let's draw, let's just see where we're at with the uptrend line. Now, this has got a little bit better uptrend line. So I'm going to connect the dots here. Uh, it's about there. And as you can see, not quite, and I can expand that up a little bit, but not quite to the uptrend, uh, to the downtrend line. Uh, if I go on this downtrend, but it's only connecting to, Right there, you can see that one is again right square dab at it. It's at a fifty percent retracement. So the the rest of what I'm what I'm looking at this week is it is it time for a bounce? That's the other question I have going into this weekend. So that's what I'm looking at for the cues, and then the Russell, and then there's the Russell, which basically we had a wonderful breakout four weeks ago. And that breakout has totally failed. So this is what we call a breakout fake out. And it appears as if the Russell is going to come on back down here and test at the, about the 209 level. Uh, this is looking very, very ugly. Uh, again, what am I looking at? Convergence of clues. Well, the convergence of clues are telling us in this particular case is my TSI is below the, below the negative 42 line. I have a two-line cluster 
here on the market forecast, and it could turn into a three-line cluster very quickly. What is the interpretation of those? They're very predictive that when we get a two-line cluster or a three-line cluster on market forecast, somewhere between one and four trading periods after that, you'll get a reversal, a tradable reversal. Uh, oftentimes that will pull back up into resistance, but we're looking like that's, you know, that's what we're looking at, you know, happening right here. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. And so what may happen is even though we have a two line cluster, price action can still push lower. And we are currently working off of a bullish Harami from yesterday. However, that has been, been totally eclipsed today with a bearish type uh, uh, candlestick. And uh, if we take out this low, then we're probably going to go on down here to the 20, 209, 208 level. Um, that's, and so that's what I'm looking at um, with regards to the, uh, the uh, Russell. It, and each one of looking like we're getting some, you know, we're getting, let me go back here to the cues real quick. There we go. As you can see, now cues, this is the other thing, is on the convergence of clues, is as long as that market forecast uh, or TSI and the market forecast longer intermediate line is pointed down, I'm not going to trade this. As, and this is for the cues. I will trade to the downside because that's where the momentum is going. And I see too many people lose money in their trades because they're trading against the momentum. They're trying to over, uh, you know, get into early before the momentum shifts. Same thing. Momentum has not shifted. We had a squeeze on the momentum yesterday on the TSI, but we are continuing to fall. This shows me right now that price action could drop uh, around the 6th or the 7th is where we can anticipate it dropping into the lower reversal zone on the, TIA, on the market forecast. However, even if it gets down there, doesn't mean it's going to bounce back up and take right off. So, Neil, that's what I'm looking at. I am, uh, my bias is to the downside right now. I think we have a good uh, opportunity to traject downward. And again, just take those measurement techniques, folks. And like on the S on the on the Russell, how far is it down? Well, okay, it's down 12.12%. So again, that's oftentimes the Russell will lead the rest of the market down. And one of the reasons for that is, is that it's not a, a weighted index. And so it's telling us that, yeah, the, the stocks on the Russell are selling off. So Ania, what do you think? Yeah, my system is giving actually wave sell signals on everything on S&P, Dow, Russell, NASDAQ uh, early in the week. And uh, right now it's not looking good. So a question for you is when you, okay, what, and what do you do as far as protecting profits? When the when the when your system is telling you that you are in in sell mode, so I have my stops already placed in. Okay, so I stopped out in many positions. So, do you raise your stops? Uh, if I have, if my pro, generally speaking, my initial stop is uh, protect the uh, capital seven percent stops. Right. And if or when it starts going up, I have a trailing uh, stop limit for about, depending on what the thing is. Initially, it's as wide as 10%. Okay. Uh, and after that, it kind of tightens up to up to five. So I had five to 6% uh, trailing stops on many of the thing and just about everything except one has stopped out. Okay, excellent. So, and, and that's part of, that's kind of tip number two, uh, or tip number, um, one of the other tips on um, on trading, you know, looking into next week and trading a, a, a weak market is one, you may have to lower your expectations when you're getting into a trade, and and which means 
If you're expecting to make 10 to 20% on a particular trade, you may have to lower your expectations to five to 10%. And so take your profits earlier. At the same time, when the, mar when the pattern starts to look really ugly, there's not a darn thing wrong with tightening your stops and or making sure you can live with the drawdown that you've established, like Neil was saying. He had a 5% trailing stop, well, or 10% trailing stop. He may occasionally raise that even higher to like make it only or lower it. No, anyway, bring it up, make it a 5% trailing stop. Uh, to what? To protect the capital. Because, you know, there's very few worse feelings than watching your profits, you know, drain out the bottom of the sieve. Um, and so when you could take action, because, you know, you don't want to get into that situation where you're going, I wish I would have, I wish I would have. The thing about it is, is take action. Because the th fact of the matter is, is that, and I know you know this, Neil, in, in practice, is that just because the, the, the entity turns against you and you sell out for a loss, who knows, two weeks from now, it may turn back around. You can get, provide a good signal to get in. And you jump back in. That is correct. So let's take let's take a look at Anil's stock. Okay, I like this stock. If it's got Lamb Research, it's a, a well-known company. Um, it it's looked like it's reacting like the rest of the, the market. But tell us, but tell us what you, how you're going to trade this. Yeah, I, my system had picked up early, really a few weeks ago and uh, went well this week until the last couple of three days. It just severely turned around. And uh, okay. Are you already in this trade? Yeah, uh, it's it's the only one that's surviving right now. Yes, I'm okay. in the trade. Where did you enter it, Anil? I entered just nearly when you when the eight eight and twenty crossed. Oh, down here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So now you're just protecting your. Now I'm protecting my my. It's going to hit my stop limit pretty soon at around sixty four or six fifty ish. Okay. Let's see from the high. So there's eight. You go into ten percent on this. Yes, at six fifty, whatever that percent is. Okay, six fifty. Yeah, right. That's about right there. So you're about eight point. You know, yeah, about a little bit over eight yeah. percent. So yeah, good job. I mean, this is really you know, the uh, sometimes people will use that. Sometimes people also use like like the eight percent uh, or eight day moving average. Uh, if you get a close below that and to take out the low of that, that's a good that's a good additional stop for to use, and or they'll use the twenty, <clears throat> the twenty day. Now the fact of the matter is, is if if you're in from down here, which you know, uh, let's say Anil's in from down here, well, up there was twenty five percent, and right there will be fourteen percent. So he doesn't want to give away much more of his profits because. They were hard earned. <laughs> yeah. So excellent. So here's my choice for today. What are we doing time wise? Okay, here's my choice for today. I am going to go with a ETF. And I'm going to look to trade this two different ways. One, XBI. Uh, XBI is the biotech uh, uh, ETF. It has a really good option, the opportunities to trade it. It is at a support or a demand zone. In other words, where, where buyers should come in. That's what happened last time. At the same time, though, it is breaking down. Uh, I, I have a two-line cluster on my market forecast. I have the uh, TSI in the lower reversal zone trying to make its way up the other side. However, I have no reversal signal here other than this is part of the other, you know, um, one of the other points. I have a convergence of clues there. That's buyers try to support it at 115 or 116. 
didn't work. Why? Look at what's happening. My, my momentum indicators were all heading down. So what's going over here on the weekly? I've got a three-line cluster starting to take shape on the weekly market forecast. I have the uh, TSI mar uh, momentum heading back down to the negative 42. I do not have a reversal candlestick on the uh, on the weeklies. And so that's kind of what I'm waiting for now. I do not have a trigger to get into this trade yet, but I'll be watching it. Uh, if I wanted to, you know, just place a safe order right now, I would place a safe order. When I say means safe, uh, low risk order, down about 101.26, uh, because it's, it is supported by, that was a past breakout area over here at the 102. We know that there's still buyers in here. We had a, you know, when, it, when it basically rallied here, it came back and tested, found the, the demand, and again, rallied up from there. Add on top of this, the opportunity to tra trade LABU. That is the leverage ETF that covers the biotechs. One of the things, take a real quick snapshot of what this chart looks like, and then look at the LABU. It is similar to, but certainly not equal to what the uh, uh, XPI was looking like. There's XPI. As you can see, XPI has not got down into test these levels where LABU has in fact already surpassed that same level. And what is that? That is due to the backwardation and also the uh, contango of the uh, entities that the uh, leverage ETF has to purchase in order to emulate a, uh, a uh, three times the, uh, uh, the move of the other. But I do like LABU, uh, but it's got to show us, it, it has, it, well, it needs to reveal and show where it's going to bounce and it hasn't done that yet. But th that's what I'm looking at, uh, Anil. So I'm going with an ETF. No, that's that's a good twist. And so happens. So here's um, let me just throw out the rest of that you know, aspect is one you lower your expectations, you tighten your stops, um, and converges. You look for convergence of clues. What is the momentum indicators telling you? Uh, you look for what is the telling us with regards to where are we compared to the moving averages. If we're way extended from it, we can expect, hey, I might probably pull back up to where? The eight, eight day or the 20 day. But remember, if it's pointed down, it's not going to come hit it up here. It's going to hit it down here somewhere. And then last but not least, uh, rather than focusing on stocks and trying to get into stocks, focus on some ETFs. Why? And I'll just, and I'll just, and the reason why is because one, there's no earnings on ETFs. They're going to be a little bit less driven by the news. Um, and so what you're trading when you're looking at the ETFs is you are trading simply the technicals. The, the other reason is the moves are dramatic, are spectacular, especially if you can almost, you can almost drop these in as a conditional order to buy it at support and then go up 7% and sell it at, or go even up 10%. Because look at the range on LABU from the low to today's. Today's range has been 16.9%. 16.9%. What about yesterday's range? It was 10%. So what I'm, what I'm saying is that there can be some very quick turnover here. Uh, but if I were to take a trade, say, off a level of support, I would make sure that my stop loss was no further than 5% away. I would take profits at, you know, like in this particular case, I would do, you know, go back in time and say, there's 11% there. What is here? There's 7.69%. Uh, uh, and so I'd be sitting there going, okay, somewhere between six, between seven and 10% is where I want to take my profits the first time. And I would exit, like if I bought 500 shares, I would sell 300 to 400 shares at the 7%, hold on to the other 100, making it break even after it triggered the sell signal. So 
So those are a couple of great tips for for moving forward. And so, uh, Neil, I, I do you ever do the short term trades like that? Not much. Uh, not okay. My system would uh, would not allow that. I used to do that, but no more. Okay, and and I I don't do it as a day trade. I do it as a conditional order type trade, where I identify the levels prior to, and then uh, uh, keep my stops. And I don't go in full positions either. So, okay. Uh, anybody have any questions? What do you what um, questions? Suggestions? I've got a question on your yes, sir true strength indicator here that I'm looking at on this stock on the daily. Yeah. Is that about to turn? Is that what it's saying? Right here? How would, yeah, how would you interpret that? Yes, it is about to turn, but it, but it is having a challenge uh, getting, getting reversed. Now, and then I, I take that both as a, uh, as you can see here, there's a couple of different ways you can look at trading that. If I get a strong uh, breakup and we actually get everything pointed up, then if I have a candlestick reversal signal, I would jump on the trade on that. Okay, if I, again, have to have a reversal signal. Um, and But yeah, it is starting to turn up. It doesn't get much lower than, than where it's at right now. Um, and then, the other great indicator with indication with it is when it crosses back up through that line right there. Now that's the negative, that's the negative 42. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so if we cross back up through the negative 42, similar to how some people use MACD and or, and or um, uh, stochastics, that's one thing. I look for confirmation with my market forecast. If my market forecast then also starts to reverse back, typically, when you get that cross up on the market forecast, as we see right there, it will correspond very quickly to a really nice trade potential on, you know, uh, if it's validated by price action, as you see right there. We came up through the, the yeah. 20 day, 8 and 20, and then it went on a nice little move. And that little nice little move right there was... Grab it real quick. Why, how much was that move? That move there. Well, Dennis, there we go. That move was from there up to there. Yeah, about a 19% move, 20% move. It's a nice move. And so, yeah, I'm going to be doing a training or I'm going to be doing a, a video um, that I will post over the YouTube channel uh, about the, uh, the ETFs and utilizing those because uh, I, you know, it is such a wonderful tool. I wish if I would have had ETFs when I first started trading, I think I, I would have, you know, I would not have run into as many roadblocks as I did uh, because they they really simplify the trades. So Mark wants to take a real quick look at SQQQ. Yeah, Mark, as you know, we did a, a trade on SQQ a little bit earlier this week. Uh, basically, really wide stops on this. And this is where you need to take a look at what are the what is the daily moves on this? And you can see that's 10%. And if I'm carrying a 5% trailing stop, it's going to get whacked out. Uh, and so that's, again, again, one of those where we jumped into a trade and jumped back out. Uh, everything looks positive on this one to the upside. Especially if SQQ, if the Qs start continue to fall down, uh, the only thing I don't like about this one is that it's a lower price when it's at about six ninety six seven dollars. Uh, but we could very well get a run back up to these levels here if the market continues to sell off. I would look at a pullback though, Mark, back into the. God, I hate that number. We're not going to use that. So a little bit, you know, about the thirty four day moving average or even down here to the 20. And again, this is very volatile. And so what's the 34? The 34 day is at, yeah, 6.66. And so, uh, so that's what I got for SQQQ. And Muhammad wants TNA. Yeah, again, Muhammad TNA, uh, 
I will I, basically it is it is off my radar. Yes, I have a cross here. Yes, I have a, a market, you know, a market forecast. I'm getting a two-line cluster, but I would say that TNA could drop a little bit further. Uh, right now, we have nothing here that's saying, hey, I'm gonna reverse. Now, when I'm saying reverse convergence of clues wise, I'm you know, if you look over here to the left, that convergence of clues there was a do uh, spinning top doji and then a reversal candle the next day. We had a reversal candle yesterday, which was a uh, um, a uh, uh, bullish harami. However, it's getting taken out today when it's dropped below and below that. Uh, what you can do is just go back and look at the other reversals. Um, at, uh, a, uh, your other reversal patterns for how they look like. So. So let me see you had a put option will be put to me. Oh, you sold a put option. Okay. Yeah, if you're trying to buy into it, I mean, it, it, it is getting close to a reversal, you know, to rally, but all the clue, the convergence of clues aren't, aren't all together there to where you can say, yeah, let's do this. So, okay, let's, uh, we'll close out for today. I ran a little bit longer than I wanted to. Hey, do you struggle with this? Spinning over two hours per week, finding strong stock setups. Well, if this sounds familiar, autopilot trading could be for you. Um, I send out a weekly list of pre-flight checklists for both the top five stocks and leverage ETF opportunities, which includes one, entry levels of triggers, all those things that you see right there, stops, video briefings, chart analysis, and, um, and the technical signals. And uh, those go out where a person can trade with us uh, or, or parallel trade with us if they choose to, or certainly paper trade to learn how the system works. Uh, right now, I'm gonna say one thing and let's shout this out to everybody. Do not, do not subscribe right now to this service. Why? I'm gonna give you a heads up. There, we, I'm gonna be basically having a, uh, um, a special starting next week. And so uh, I would rather get you, know, uh, uh, you in for an, at least a pre-flight or a uh, uh, test, test flight uh, where we're gonna be open it up where you can do it by the quarter. And so that uh, is something you wanna take a look at. So, uh, and again, if you're a premium member, you're already getting all this stuff anyway. So again, do not, do not, you know, again, subscribe to the autopilot trading service this week. There'll be something coming before Monday, Friday of next week that you, I think you'll be really pleased with. So, Anil, that's it for today. Uh, we'll get ready for the final hour. Thank you for the discussion. And uh, enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time on that uh, indicator. So not a problem. Yeah, I, I, I love that indicator. I love that indicator. And um, so, hey, everybody, just uh, remember 2021, consistent discipline wealth building. We'll look to continue that going into 2022. Uh, it is a great time. Take some time as we get into the holiday season to evaluate how well you did in 2021, what things you need to modify going into 2022. Uh, so you can be a better trader. Uh, so you can be a better trader. So, Anil, thank you. And we'll see you next next week, I hope. All right. Thank you. Okay. Have a great one, guys. Aloha.